This video is the second in the series. In the previous video, I covered the installation of the Heritage Home and Commercial Inspection Report. I also briefly introduced inspection report formats and templates. In this video, I'm going to continue covering the inspection report formats and templates and page templates in detail. As you'll see, there's a difference between a report template and a page template. First thing I want to do is put a picture on my cover for my report. The cover page is common to all of the reports by default. You can substitute the cover page with your own cover page or you can omit a cover page altogether if you prefer. I'll select the large photo from the photo insertion group in the main control panel. It's going to open my browse window so I'll browse down to the photograph that I want and I'll double click on the photo. You can see that the photo is automatically sized and positioned for you on the cover. I'm going to jump over to our inspection reports. We'll go through some of the options for predefined templates. We have first the report template that it's labeled as my report. That's actually your standard report. That's the your master report that you've set up. It can be anything you want and it can be changed at any time you want. You can change it on the fly if you want. The single family is just as it says. It's a predefined single family report. The legacy is a report format that is based on a format that we've had for a very long time since uh, we started actually. It's evolved over time. It has a fresh look and feel to it, new features, but it still retains enough of that look from years ago uh, that uh, if you're a long time user of our software it'll be a nice smooth easy transition into the new heritage. Hometrex is the report format from the previous uh, versions of Hometrex. The difference is that with the new Hometrex format we've enhanced it uh, considerably based on feedback from inspectors and so on. So we've put some of the features in the home trucks page set that previously you did not have. The commercial report is a predefined commercial report. Custom report, this report is a continuously expandable. We'll get into what I mean by continuously expandable in a few minutes also. It's a completely blank report. This is so that you can build a report completely from the ground up in the order that you want everything and so on. Internachi, Nahi, Ashi, pretty much what it sounds like. The Internachi and the Nahi report have the Internachi and the Nahi standards of practice incorporated in the report. The Ashi does not have the standards of practice incorporated into the report, but it's reserved for that purpose. So those of you who are following the uh, ASHI standards and are ASHI members, you can plug that in as you go or plug that into your template and save that. The HQS uh, is for Section 8. For those of you who do Section 8 inspections, it's a, a growing area. The Nevada, New York, North Carolina, and Texas reports. And the reason that we have templates for those four states in particular is that they are the most clearly defined and the strictest states in terms of their standards of practice. In particular Texas, the inspectors in Texas, if you're in Texas and are watching this you already know this, but uh, for those who are not in Texas they are mandated to use a particular format therefore we've provided that that mandated format predefined for the Texas inspectors. Page sets. The page sets are groups of related pages and with as with the 
other pages you can turn these off run at any time photo album pages as I described a few minutes ago these would be traditional just as you would have in an old-fashioned photo album with photos uh, on a page grouped together six to a page we have a three to a page option and so on ancillary pages um, these are for ancillary items they would include such things as the uh, ADA for the Americans with Disabilities Act common areas industrial um, roof mounted air handling units uh, just a variety of different things that uh, wouldn't necessarily be part of certainly not part of a home inspection but commercial buildings tend to vary more than homes do in terms of which types of components and things that they have and the requirements and so on so invoice is exactly as it sounds it's an invoice job order form is a job order uh, take down all of the information when you schedule a job make sure that you have the information that you need index pages these are the indices to the individual reports all pages this simply displays all of the pages that are available to you in the software navigation this is important you'll see that we have some predefined where you can jump directly to a section in an individual predefined report or report template this is particularly beneficial if you just want to jump over to another template just for reference and then return to the uh, report that you're working in and it's also good if you're working in a report to to be able to move around show contextual tabs or hide contextual tabs by default we have what are called contextual tabs hidden and I'll demonstrate that as long as we're here I have the photo on the, the cover page of the report when I click on this picture you will see that it highlights it so I could rotate it move it resize it and so on but that's the only real control I have over the picture I don't have any additional editing capability at this point however if I come back over to my contextual tabs under navigation I say show contextual tabs you'll see that at the top of the screen we had a new tab pop up it's called picture tools now when I click off of that picture those picture tools are no longer available to me that's why it's called contextual it's based on what you're doing in the case of photos it gives you the photo editing once again I'll click on the photo I have my picture tools now when I come up to picture tools you'll see that I have a variety of things that I can do I can do correction to the picture artistic effects color adjustments and so on uh, frames and just for fun and to demonstrate this I'll hover over some of these there's a nice uh, oval you can give the photo a soft edge rounded corners with a mirror effect shadows and so on a little bit of an artistic touch is nice but you don't want it to uh, go too far with something like that but anyway that's what a contextual tab is I'll return my main control panel and I'll go back to hide contextual tabs I left my soft edge on the photo by the way the next thing we'll look at is page templates now we're going to return to the uh, report templates those are fully defined reports but a page template is just a page that you can use to build new pages you can, they can be anything you want them to be you can incorporate those new pages into any of the reports you can mix and match with the report formats you don't have to stick with an individual report format you can take from the legacy for example and mix with the home treks format and so on typically wouldn't do that but there are some situations where that would be uh, an appropriate thing to do what I'll do is I'll come over to my page sets I'm going to turn on all pages we're going to see everything that's available to us if we look at the bottom of the screen I'll scroll through you'll see we have 
quite a few individual pages. You'll see that I have page tabs labeled template 1, template 2, template 3, template 4. I'll start with uh, template 1. I'll zoom in on this page a little bit. Easier to see. And I'm going to take out these graphics at the top of the uh, columns. This template belongs to the Hometrex family and what I mean by that is that the controls, the layout and so on are consistent with the Hometrex report layout, the report format. The templates are all in the Hometrex layout. You can use the predefined reports or the custom report for the continuously expandable. It's not labeled as a template because it's not a page template. It's an entire blank report template which I'll get back to in just a few minutes. What I can do in the template is, you can see I have a few things in here already, but I can define these fields to be anything I want them to be by using my category assignment tool. If I come up to my main control panel, you'll see I have a group called library. I click on category assignment tool, it opens, and it tells me what category from the library is assigned to that uh, field. If I were to go to a field that had no category assigned, such as this one, I know that it doesn't have a category assigned because I don't have a drop down yet. You'll see here I have a drop down. And I'll just uh, grab something different here to show you how the drop downs work. It's pretty self explanatory. But uh, I'll come over here, for example, to crawl space. This field, as I said, does not have anything assigned, so when we pull up the category assignment tool, you'll see that the comments window is completely empty and nothing is highlighted here. So if I come over here, I'll just grab um, I'll just grab a, a category. I'll assign this by clicking on assign comment category to this field. It says, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I do. Now, I can go on. I can leave this open and move it around, move it out of my way. I come down here, assign a different uh, category if I want to, to a different field. Like this. And you'll see that after I assign these categories, I now have a small downward pointing triangle that indicates that I now have a category from the library related to this field or vice versa this field is now related to a category in the library so if I click on one of these it will put that uh, comment in that field that's how you would build a page you can assign any category from the library to any field in the report that's true not just of the individual page templates but of the report templates. So you can see you can make this report anything you want it to be. That's an example of how you would use a template page to build a new page for your uh, report or for inclusion in another fully developed template. I could have made this uh, as an example. I have this uh, roof, but I could have made this rooftop air handlers. I could go through instead of doing crawl space I could have uh, the enclosure for example I could have uh, door interlocks, I could have uh, belts, uh, pulleys, uh, curb mount, um, just 
all the things that you would have with a rooftop air handler, I could incorporate that into a commercial report. I could do boilers, I could do fire doors, anything that you want to do. And you can see that you could go through if you knew what you wanted to have in the page for a particular item, uh, you could very easily create a page using the tools that we provide in a matter of a few minutes, five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, probably would be at the outside. So that's a that's a, a page template. Now if we look at the report, the home tricks, we have a large collection of predefined pages and again you can include or exclude any of the uh, pages. What I'll do is uh, come over here to our select pages and show you how you would do that. You'll see when I click on the uh, drop menu for job setup it brought up some choices here. We've looked at the inspection details and inspector details in the previous video in this series. The select pages is this box here, this dialog box, and you'll see that some of these pages have a check mark in the box next to them and they're highlighted in blue. If I scroll through you'll see some are checked, others are unchecked. If a page is checked it's in the report. If it's unchecked it's not in the report and you can change this at any time. Then again this will become your report. This, this will open up to every time you open the report. So this is how I have it set to open. I have 36 pages. It's more than I would have in a report. Some inspectors will have more I typically will have fewer, but let's say uh, for example I want to turn off this uh, basement crawl space. Let's say I'm in a place like Florida where they really aren't uh, very common. I might run across one occasionally at which point I could just turn that page back on by going into select pages putting a check mark there. So I'm going to save this and exit and that page is no longer in this report. That's the Home Trex format. You have the individual page templates that are in the Home Trex format and then you have all of the predefined pages to build a report from that are in the Home Trex format. Let's go back over to our report templates. Let's go down to let's let's go to the Nevada report. This is the Nevada template. The Nevada template is an example of a continuously expandable report. You'll see that we have the Nevada standards of practice in the report. The report is laid out to follow the standards exactly. It uses the Nevada numbering system and so on. So there's no question in the reader's mind, whether that's the home buyer, uh, real estate agent, lawyer, mortgage person, whether or not the inspector followed the standards for the state because it's laid out right here for them. Here's an example of where we put in check boxes, custom check boxes, full inspection, partial inspection or reinspection. This is a requirement in Nevada. And as we look at the other reports like Texas for example, you'll see that uh, Texas has similar requirements, though they don't have the numbering system, they do have a particular format and sequence, and that's the important thing in the Texas is that sequence. So you'll see that we fully developed this. You could easily do this yourself if you're working to a different set of standards. Instead of using the Nevada, you would use the custom template, which we'll come to in just a minute. Once inside the template, you'll see that you have the drop boxes. You can use uh, drop boxes to retrieve comments from your library, or you can use the global search. This actually is my preferred method. 
I'll demonstrate this briefly. This global search function is actually the topic of a, a video all of its own, which I encourage you to watch. The global search and retrieval function is one of the most powerful features of the Heritage Report. So I'm just going to type in phrase recommend further because I know I have some comments I'm recommending further evaluation. I'll do the search. I'll scroll through. You see that I have a variety of options here and uh, we're looking at kitchen and, and appliances here so I'm just going to say review by a qualified uh, contractor. So all I have to do is double click and there's my comment appears in the field. Of course double left click to put a check mark, right click to put an, at, an X and again I can clear by either right clicking or double left clicking. Once I have completed the report in the continuously expandable, the last thing I'm probably going to want to do is a page break view. I'll look at my page breaks. I'll start at the top, scroll down. If I'm comfortable with the page breaks, I'll leave them as they are. If I want to adjust any of them, I simply grab it, hold down the left mouse button, drag up. That's it. I'm done with that. I go back to the normal view and then I can uh, create whatever output I can print or create a PDF and so on. So that's an example of the continuously expandable template. I'll just briefly take a look at some of the others. Here we have the uh, InterNACHI and again it follows the InterNACHI standards. It has a comment uh, about the standard in the individual sections. It uses the numbering system so there's no question that you followed this particular standard. And if you follow NAHI, again we start off with the NAHI purpose, scope, and general statements. Move on through the report in the exact order and using the NAHI numbering system. So if you're a NAHI certified inspector you may want to use this template. I'll just uh, take a brief look here at New York. You'll see again same same principle. And uh, North Carolina and then of course the Trek which is Texas. And again this is very specific to Texas as far as the definition they have to follow this exact format. They cannot deviate from this in Texas. You however as a user of Heritage can take any one of these and change these fields to whatever you want to change them to. If you want to use one of them as a starting point for a report but you don't want to go through the entire report beginning to end Speaking of which, we'll go to the custom report. Here you'll see we have the sections pre-numbered. Uh, we do use a, a numbering system as just as an example to get you started. Again, just to show you how this works. You can hide these that are in gray. You can change the colors. These are section titles. If I want to hide a section title, I simply come over here to the rows group. I click on hide and there it's now hidden. In fact I can do that with an entire section if I have already predefined the report but I want to exclude that particular section from this individual report I simply come over and hide. This message box says that the hidden rows will not appear in the report and if we want those back we just simply reveal them by clicking on show and we have our hidden fields back. As you can see we give you a large number of sections to work with. At the end you can highlight and hide any unused sections just as I did above. I can just simply go all the way to the end and hide. 
those are the examples of the continuously expandable. You've seen the home tracks. That leaves us with the legacy format. You'll see that our tabs at the bottom of the screen have changed. We have the general page which is common to all of the reports and as with all of the pages it's optional. You can exclude this from the report if you'd like. All of these fields can be changed of course just as all of the fields through the entire report regardless of the template all fields can be changed. This is what we call a nomenclature field. Larger fields are called comments field. Many of the categories in the library are complementary sets where we have one category would be the nomenclature, in other words items. The other category would be comments related to those items. And I'll just pull up the category assignment tool to show you uh, a couple of examples. Let's say for example electrical. I have several electrical nomenclature fields Here's the service entrance and panels. You'll see I have a variety of descriptors related to service entrances and panels. But I also have a separate category for comments. So I can populate this with whatever comments that I want. If I come up a couple of rows here, you'll see that I have a bedroom and interior nomenclature and then I have bedroom and interior comments. Bathroom nomenclature, bathroom comments, and so on. So that's how the uh, library is structured and that's how you would relate the library to your individual reports or report pages or report formats. We've updated the pages they have a little bit cleaner look than the older checklist style reports. Checklist reports are still very popular in the industry. Legacy pages are also very good for specialized inspections such as a roof. I frequently do roof only inspections. I don't need a full blown home inspection template. It's nice to be able to just come in. I can either use the roof page from either Legacy or from the home tracks page set. I tend to like the legacy if I'm doing a roof only inspection where if I'm doing a complete inspection I might use the home tracks roof page or page set. Here we have a matrix and this is five columns where I identify the location this happens to be bedrooms so I can say that the uh, bedroom number one is on the first floor I start with the uh, master bedroom as, as bedroom one. You can do this whatever way you identify rooms. And if I have something additional that I want to add to that, I'll just say see comments. And then as I go through these sections, electrical outlets, floor, ceiling, and walls, alarms, detectors, fenestrations, which is windows, doors, skylights, I, now I have uh, qualitative um, boxes good, fair, marginal, poor, and like with everything else in the report you can change these. You can make this whatever uh, you choose to make these descriptions. But it's very easy to follow because everything that's in the one column is bedroom one. Everything in the two column is bedroom two, three, four, and five, and so on. If you have more than five bedrooms, that's no problem either. You simply come up to the page tasks you could say copy current page. I would actually do that before I started the report. So I'll clear these two boxes here. I'll come over to page task, copy current page. Ask me if I want to make an exact uh, duplicate. I say yes. Now down at the bottom of my screen, I have bedrooms and then I have bedroom, bedrooms two, exactly the same. And to show you that they are different pages, I'll put some check marks. in one of them and we'll go to the other and you'll see that uh, those check marks are not there. So, there. So I have two bedroom pages. Now of course the second bedroom page I would relabel these 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
or whatever number I need. So that's the legacy page set. Those of you who have been long time users of our inspection report software will recognize the pages as being from the legacy family but updated. Another difference with the new legacy pages. Historically, if you use the legacy report, you would use photo album pages. I've mentioned photo album pages a couple of times. This is what I mean by photo album page. If I want to put a picture, I just simply click on the button, insert picture. It's going to open up my browse window. I locate the picture I want, double click on it, and there the picture is put in place for me. And again, I just go through each picture. They're numbered. I'm just grabbing pictures at random here, obviously. I don't need to be in that field. All I have to do is click on that button. It will place the photo and size it for me in each field. So there I just put six photos in. I can put descriptions under the pictures or of course I can uh, do additional annotation and again I won't go into detail there because that's uh, something that's covered in considerable detail in another video. This is another option with photos. Here we have three photos and you can see we have a large narrative area where you can put some detailed narratives you can format and so on. And as far as colors with text that again we have a color word option where you can have comments automatically appear in one of three colors. You can always change those colors but if you want them to automatically appear your choices are red, blue, and green. And again that's covered in detail in a separate video as well. Now the going back to the legacy pages we do have room in many of the pages, not all but but the majority where you can put photos and additional comments because it is essentially a checklist style report but you still have times when you need to make comments. In the past you would have grouped all of your comments to the end in a summary page unless you only had very brief comments we give you more space and of course we did not have space for photos in the old style legacy pages. They were strictly intended to be done with the photo album pages. Here you'll see up in our photo insertion we have the options left and right photo, large photo which we did on the cover but we also have left middle right and this is the ideal setup for the legacy page. So I'll just grab three photos quickly. Uh, there's photo number one is uh, for left photo, photo number two for middle photo, and photo number three for the right photo. You see all I had to do was select the photo, double click on it, it's automatically sized and positioned for me. They're perfectly aligned, perfectly spaced, and so on. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, watch the other videos in the series and we'll continue the walkthrough through the uh, Heritage and Home Treks reports. Thanks for watching.